Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing with another product review video. This one happens to be a Promax um, 325cc big block Chevy head. Now what's different about this is because of that, which we'll get to in a minute. Those are small rollable ports, but this head is fully CNC machined. And I, I floated on my flow bench, I actually floated on a very big bore just to see how much um, it would actually really flow. And I'm going to share those results with you, but I thought I'd go over some aspects of the head itself and talk about it a bit. So it actually starts its life as the um, 290 as cast head from Promax. And that head, I'm going to say allegedly because I don't want to claim 100%, is a copy of the allegedly of the AFR 190 or 290 head. So from that point, then they CNC port it and you've got this one. That's why it's 325 cc's, which for a small roll port is pretty large. Um, so, and they claim, I looked on the website just to say they claim to float 418. I'll go ahead and tell you it doesn't touch that, but it is pretty decent. So let's just get to what the head is. So it's a 24 degree head. Stock valve angle for a big block Chevy is 26. So this is two degrees different. It's more of a modern chamber design in that, in that aspect. Because of that, you've got a much better chamber than stock. So if you're replacing, say, your 781s, this is a much better chamber from that um, in general. So it's also 23 to 24 degree valve angle on the intake, which is better than two degrees better. Some of you may be worried about, well, what about my pistons? Usually the 24 degree stuff will work with a 26 degree piston. Of course, you got to mock it up just to see, especially with the domes, because you can have, and, and this has been in my experience, the dome usually actually contacts here, um, which is weird. And this part's actually the easiest to grind down. Now, is that always? No. Don't take that as absolute, but in my experience, the place where it hits is here. Um, on some other heads, like say the Brodox Race Rights, which are the 781s, some of the domes will actually hit here, but usually on an AFR, they just barely hit here. So most of the time, it's fine, but just something to keep in mind. Um, this this one is a 2300 and a 188 exhaust valve. Now, these are the valves that actually came with it, because this whole head was put together by um, Promax, and a customer just sent it to me. They've got these valves. Now they have a black knife, some kind of black coating on the stems and on the face or on the outside here, but on the actual machine part, it's still machined, which does bring up something else. That's a two, 300 intake valve and I've already floated. So I don't wanna give away too much before you see the flow sheets. But one of the things that's for sure not gonna help it is there is no back cut on this valve. In other words, this is where the valve actually makes contact with the head. Usually on most heads, um, they put a back cut, which is another angle that goes this way. And what it does is that the valve opens, it gives a better transition for the air to come out and the low lift flow is improved. So I'm gonna tell you straight up, had they had a valve with a back cut, the low lift flow will be better. When you see the um, flow sheet, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, that's the intake valve. The exhaust valves are the same way-ish. They got the black coating on the face here and on the stem, and they're machined this way. Now this is a nail head exhaust. I do have something called a tulip that flows a little better, but this one actually flowed really good. Um, so there's those. If we look at the ports now, there, I should point out on a big block Chevy, there's a long runner, you can kind of tell that design, and a short runner. Most people only advertise a flow from the long runner because that's the one that usually flows better, and of course you want to kind of show off. But the short runner I also flowed they do flow different. So I know some of you are like, all of them should flow the same if it's CNC ported. On a big block Chevy, they just don't. Um, that port's just different. You can't have air slamming into the side of the wall compared to one going in the center and flow the same. We can get them close, but not the same. So if you look at it, I'm just gonna be, you know, just giving an example. The chambers actually, when they come as cast on like a 290 head is actually really nice. So they didn't really need to do much CNC work here. I think that they claim that the chamber's 120. I, I didn't CC it, but I'm betting the chamber's bigger unless they milled it some more down to make up for that. Because in order for you to put those CNC lines in this, your chamber had to grow. Because that's the same shape that it is from the 290. I don't think they altered it at all. Um, besides just making it bigger so the CNC lines clean up and everybody thinks, oh, I got a CNC chamber. But I bet you they have to mill it down to make up for that. Um, valve job, but this is weird. The valve job looks nice, except for most of us, most of the CNC heads you see, they will actually either one, their CNC path lines up perfectly with their valve job and there's no lip like this, 
or two, which is more common, after it gets off the CNC machine, they take a cartridge roll and they just blend this little lip out where the valve job is, and that's it. Because that also probably hurt a little bit of flow. Not a ton, but it definitely hurts some. So it's really only there. It's not on the short side, but you can see it on this, hopefully. You can barely see something there. It's not as bad on some and worse on others, so there's that. Um, the port itself, the shape doesn't look bad. You can see the line where the transition is from the machine. In other words, they have a the porting probe is porting this way first and then stops here. And then it flips around from the other side and starts porting there. That's the transition line where they meet. That ridge there will also be on the short side. And if you smooth that up on the short side, you'll gain some flow. Just that line. Um, this one, of course, doesn't look as bad. Let's move my light over. You can see it, but it's not quite as bad. See what I mean about the valve job? It's got a ledge there, but not so bad. Each one's a little different. But anyway, that's that view. Let me flip around the other view so I can show you the intake ports from the other side. Here's the intake ports. I'm gonna go ahead and straight out, start off by saying, I hate these ports, these intake ports here. And let me explain, it's not their porting or anything else like this. But what they, and this is common, um, AFRs are this way, and Elderbrock Performer RPMs are this way too, they're oval ones. These aren't really ovals, they're rovals. Um, in other words, they, you could think of like a 781 as a small oval, right? Well, then they're like, well, it needs more area, so let's make a rectangle. Great. The problem with that is they've only focused on the head. There is very few manifolds, especially since a lot of people just buy this and bolt on a manifold without doing any port match. There are next to no manifolds that have this opening, period. So you have to port match it. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, not all manifolds can be port matched to fit that size and that shape, really. Um, in other words, there's not material there. You end up, especially in the corners here, you end up being almost out of the manifold. So in other words, the manifold's like here. Actually, more like here. So you have hardly any seating material here as it comes around. You might be able to get it on the top and bottom, maybe through the sides here, but the corners, really, it's here on each one of them because the manifold just doesn't do that. They're used to an oval, so it's like this. So they're like, I've got 200 thousandths away. Well, then you moved it up, and there's next to no material, really. So on some of manifolds, it doesn't work. None, I don't know of any manifold that comes out of the box. I think AFR is working on one where it's actually a true roval like this that actually bolts up close to it. They're all usually ovals like your 781s. So I do not like this shape. Um, this is one of those things where you've got, and this is me ranting, this is one of the things where you have a cylinder head guy that you focus sim simply on just getting the cylinder head, forgetting it's the whole induction package that has to go with it. So on the flow bench, this thing's a badass piece, but you can't get a damn manifold to fit it. Um, that's one of the disadvantages of just focusing on one area. You gotta think of the whole thing, things gotta go with it. So I do think, and I'm not saying it's impossible, there are manifolds you can make to work. Um, don't, don't say that there's not, there are, it's just, for the average guy that buys this head, if you're just trying to slap on a manifold, you're gonna be disappointed. Because it, let's say you just put on one that's an oval. You just lost any of the advantage you had from this. You got a little bitty oval that's inside this. The head's bigger. It just, which the, obviously you want the head bigger than the manifold, but man, it just, it's not a good transition. It really does, it screws the whole thing up. So anyway, there's my rant on that. But the shape, as far as like, strictly on the head size, if you head, side itself it looks fantastic you got a nice look the shape looks good it's got good corner radius i mean the thing really looks good the cnc work looks good looks really nice and i should point out you could tell some places where shadow because they hit it with a cartridge roll here and here shadows means where the cnc porting went and got done but the casting moved over enough where the cnc porting never touched here so they just hit it with a cartridge roll to make it look like it wasn't horrible Anyway, this is also 325 cc's, which does make you think, why wouldn't you just get a regular rectangular port instead of this? Just my thoughts. Now these heads came assembled from um, Promax, and this is more of me being critical. I don't like these seals. Um, I will say they seal up perfectly. You don't have to worry about oil. I'm just not a fan of them because I have seen where these come off. Um, especially when this ring gets close, it'll pop that ring right here off and it ends up in your oil. Um, not the end of the world. Another thing to point out is they're not the same locks. And bear with me as I explain this. This is seven degree locks. I hate seven degree locks. 
You know, I hate seven degree locks. They work great. I mean, as far as functionality, yes, until there's a rebuild. And what happens is up here on this groove on a rebuild, so let's say they run run for a while, it actually mushrooms out that square groove in the valve. So when you get run for a while, they're mushroomed out and you got to push them through the guide. They won't go and you got to file this down because it's mushroomed out. I That's why I hate seven degree locks. 10 degree locks seem to never do that. But there are two different locks. See the gold color? See the black? It's not the end of the world. I just want just making you aware of this in case you decide, I'm gonna check for piston to valve clearance and you put on your um, checking spring or whatever, or you're doing a degree in your cam and you put on a checking spring, you wanna do something else where you take these out. Be aware, especially when you're done like this, you cannot just put any lock in there because this is the gold lock. If you look at the groove where it is, Okay, it looks like it's trying to lower the installed height down, which is fine. This is the other one. That's a normal lock, seven degree. See that's in the center, high. The reason why they're doing it is to help not put as many shims underneath the, um, look, the spring cup here to get the correct installed height. So doing it this way is not incorrect. It's not. There are several times where I will use different locks on intake versus exhaust. The only thing you need to be aware of, they are different. So. If you pop them off, you can't put that lock in here. Otherwise, it changes the spring installed height. Same with here to here. And you for sure can't interchange them. You'll just cause the, you yourself to drop a valve if you put a gold and a black. In other words, black one side and gold the other. You're going to have issues. So just something to keep aware of. It's not the end of the world, though. Let's look at the exhaust, then we get the flow numbers. Here's the exhaust side. They look really, really nice. And I have to say, the exhaust flow actually did really well for what they are. Um, they're quite large, though. I will say a little bit large. Not the end of the world, though. Uh, but the exhaust port is raised. So one of the things that big block people excuse, usually have to worry about is, well, my header's clear. I get asked that a lot. A lot of the headers will work with raised exhaust port. Some will not. It's one of those things where you better check first. These do have a raised exhaust port and it makes a huge difference in flow, and you're going to see in a minute. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Nice exhaust ports. They look great. I mean, they do move some air. So let me get the flow numbers and we can share those. So here we have the Pro Max 325cc head on the flow bench. I will warn you, the numbers are probably gonna look a little bit higher because of the bore I floated on. So yes, I use my Sanyes flow bench. If I'd used my Super Flow, it would have gone higher, but these are already pretty high anyway because of the bore size. So this guy's running on a 540. It's bored 30 over. I don't have that bore size, which would be a 5.5. Uh, sorry, 4.53. The closest I have for him would be a 4.625, and that's what I floated on. So it's pretty much the biggest bore this head would ever go on anyway. I know some of you are like, ah, I wish you'd float on a 4.310. Maybe at the end of this video you'll see it. If not, I just didn't have time. But, so this is, you could do it this way. This is the best this head's ever going to flow right now because it's on a very large bore. The valves are more unshrouded this way, and it is, and it, it's just going to help it flow more. Anyway, let's look at the numbers. Oh, by the way, everything's there. Here's the gasket. Spark plug was used. And you're gonna see on the flow sheet just a second. Remember, there's a short runner and a long runner for the intake. All the exhaust ports are the same. I don't float with an exhaust pipe. This cylinder one's a, the long runner. This is typically the one everybody advertises because it flows the best. I care most about, if you watch my videos, four, six and peak so we look at four 281 and 282 on the short runner that's pretty good um it would have been better i think it probably would have been the 290s if the intake valves had a back cut because they didn't it really helps this flow up at the top but it hurts the low lift flows i mean you can kind of tell looking at 200 at 140s that's small block chevy territory um 600 number 371 and 342 about 30 cfm difference that's i mean Usually we're about 20 CFM, but this head's a little bit different that way. So the it's more of a change here. Very good flow though. And then if we look at the peak numbers, it looks like it hits 388 at 900 and 378 um, or 381 on the short runner. The peak numbers look really, really good for the size of, well, for this port. These rovals are kind of weird. So overall, that's actually a really good number there. The, the higher lift flow numbers are really good. Even the 600 number is really good. And I'm like, no, I don't know who runs a 900 lift cam. There's a lot of big block guys that do. Maybe not with this head, though. 
but it kind of tells me how stable the port is. Anyway, let's go on the exhaust. The exhaust, remember, flow without an um, exhaust pipe attached. And I have to say the numbers are pretty good. Low lift's a little, little not too good here, but um, I shouldn't say bad. It's, it's pretty good. The 400 number is really good, 207. And the peak flow of 309, really great. To be quite honest with you, the exhaust port is pretty good. Now, it's helped out because it's a raised exhaust port, but that exhaust flow is good, uh, no doubt about that. So there's very little to be picky about on the exhaust side. Um, only thing I really can criticize is pretty much the low lift flow that could have been improved with a back cut. But probably better for most of what guys are running because most of the guys that run this are probably going to run maybe a 700 lift max cam. So if you would put a back cut on the intake valves, you would have helped out these numbers here and it would have been better for that engine itself that it goes on. Anyway, overall, really good head. Whoever uses this should be pretty ecstatic, even though it's 325 cc's and it's got that weird roll. Anyway, guys, remember, I'm no superman. You guys take care.